Now, we're going to transition into understanding data better, which is one of the, the core ingredients of Greenbelt training. However, before we do that, we have to realize there's a transition point. The transition point is recognizing that in processes, the way we describe and understand how well a process works is through measurement. And understanding where variation exists in the process, how much variation is caused by different states of the process, that that is going to be how we understand the results of what to improve. So fundamentally, the very first step is understanding process. Now we've given a little description in terms of what we mean by one of the techniques called a SIPOC map. We identified this as one of the tools that's in the defined phase. Now it's appropriate to investigate what do we actually mean by a SIPOC map. So a SIPOC map is going to take a look at the end-to-end -end process. Supplier provides inputs to the process, and the process provides outputs to the customer. That's pretty simple. And so what we're looking at, though, is there are input process measures. Those are coming from our suppliers. It's about on-time delivery, the quality of what we get. It's about the expectation that we might have for performance. And it's also about the cost of those components and the materials that are coming into our process. Inside our process, we can take a look at all of the process parameters as we move the process through. So it's, again, following the same kernel of measures. It's the time it takes, it's the quality of the components, and it's the transaction cost as we're creating value through the process. We've accumulated all of that value into an output or a deliverable. So we have results measures. So we have process measures of two types process measures from the suppliers, and then in-process measures, both of those creating the Y measures that we talked about. The Y measures are the results measures. So those are the output deliverables to our customers. And how well they perform as the output of our process versus the expectation to the customer is one of the indicators we have about the quality of our performance. So we take a look at this, we would see on the supplier side, we have to identify who are all the critical suppliers. Who's providing with, with say, for instance, raw material, uh, support services, testing? Who's providing our employees? Is it subcontractors or transportation? Or is it a joint venture company? Inside the process, we have to take a look, what are all the steps in the process? What are the key performance indicators in that process? What are the ones that we have which are controllable, which we can do something about, and which ones are uncontrollable? And that's going to act as noise that we can't do anything about it, so we have to figure out how do we dampen the noise or take the noise away. And finally, the output, which customers are getting which deliverables and how do they differ in terms of their expectations for what's going to be done. So the process, the input process output, is kind of like the, the kernel of the core of that process. It's around the measurement system and the transformation of the inputs into the outputs. That's where we are measuring this Y is a function of X. So Y is the output measure, then we have X is from in process, and also X is from the suppliers. So over time, what we'll see is that this whole business flow at a very high level is going to be able to tell us how well we're actually performing. We can use high level measures or indicators of the output from the supplier and the process to determine how well we deliver to customers. We can segment customers by type and see how do different changes of our process compare to each other. None of this information is good enough to actually do diagnostic analysis to understand where problems coming from, but it can tell us in a broad sense which sorts of combinations of these issues are going to be concerns and help us to align where we're going to conduct our investigations in the measure phase. So we include this SIPOC view as a high-level process map. It's used to set expectations in the defined phase, but in the measure phase, we're going to come back and take a look, much more detailed understanding of the visual representation of the process, both in terms of process functions and process steps and the handoffs between people, as well as the measurement impacts that we have that are capable of being recorded at each of those different circumstances throughout the process. So, this gives you just some sort of feeling for how this process map can be created at a very high level. And the other thing we'll see is that we can then focus in this process step on where exactly are we going to do our improvements. Because there, we can blow this up into detail and see, here, there's actually a seven-step process. But it's in this step that we're actually going to deal with in terms of this particular process improvement. And that allows us to set the context for where we're going to go with the improvements for this project. And this is one of the reasons why the SIPOC map is typically included in the defined phase and the project charter.
So now let's turn to one more question about how do we actually manage this project more effectively. So one more final step in terms of project management, and then we'll get into the analytics regarding the data.